good day guys, today we are staying in this beautiful resort called Arunan and which is located at Patani Beach, Pulau Perhentian Perhentian Kecil, the small island so this resort was built in 2015 and it's very very special they did not cut any trees and build the resort all around it so it's amazing so before we show you this, we're gonna show you our room. So this room has a double bed and a single bed and an amazing sea view. And this is the toilet. Beautiful guys. Hello. And the shower. We got to be here. Oh, you can see the look at this. Very, very nice. There's also a private balcony upstairs. Let me show you. So we're just gonna have a quick uh, breakfast with Sunny over here, Hello. who is the owner of the Arunan Resort in the Perentian. And later on, we're gonna talk about how you can uh, preserve the, the coral here at the Arunan Resort and how you can adopt your own coral. All right, guys, so today we are here with uh, Sunny, who is the owner of the Arunan Resort in the Perentian uh, Kitchen, the small island. And can you introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, right, good morning everyone. My name is Sunny. Uh, I'm the owner of the resort. <laughs> and by the way, welcome to Aluna. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Um, being a marine builder, my job brought me to every part of the coastal of Malaysia as well as some of the islands around Malaysia. Uh, marine builder, my job scope was building jetty, lighthouse, and some... And some Mooring system for our shipping as well as the safety of the sea. So that's my job scope actually. Um, when you're working in the sea, you realize that, and I realize that, wow, Malaysia has a lot of beautiful islands. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. expect Perintian. I mean, I've grown up in, in the west of Malaysia, west coast of Malaysia, you see water in this level. Yeah, but when nothing. I come, <laughs> when I come to Perhentian, wow, it's beautiful. You can see the whole entire sea in one glance, right? So I pick up diving, and being a diver, you have this mindset of um, protecting the environment, protecting the environments, and uh, adoptions. I mean, the, the marine life are, are, are beautiful, and the marine life are actually is very sensitive. So that led me to actually create a have an idea of opening a resort but that's just a dream okay <laughs> it's so just the, a dream so the resort was opened in 2015 right yeah so the resort was built in 2015 it was opened in 2015 great and uh, so you're trying to protect the environment here in the underlying resorts and you have something called adopt coral so can you tell us a little bit more about this okay you always thought the air come from the trees that's yeah. what everybody will tell. And ask everybody, they say, yeah, the oxygen, the tree gave us the oxygen. But do you know that 70% of the air that we breathe came from the sea through the phytoplanktons, right? And we are not well uh, informed enough about how important the marine life all started with the corals and how corals impact the whole ecosystem of the marine life. Right. So if you protect the corals, you build the foundations for the, for the fish. So the fish call that a home. The small fish seek protection from that. They provide food, they provide all the, the nutrients. And that's where the big fish, the karma and the whole ecosystem begins with corals. So that's how we create, uh, we, we started this coral project in 2015. Sorry, 2018, not 2015. With our, by hiring and working with Marine Park of Malaysia, 
And we are the only resort that has a certifications by Marine Park yeah. and recognizes us as a conservation resort. So how many uh, corals have we planted so far? Okay, we started our corals, we started uh, with a small scale projects and we realized that although we can we know about the corals, but let's just bring this knowledge to the guests. Yeah. Yeah. And we want guests to adopt the corals as far right now. Underneath the water, we have about almost 300 locks. Wow. If times five, we have about 1,000 little pots actually underwater. So you, you, you call it the coral nursery, right? Yes. All right. So this is going to be the whole uh, thing about the, the video today. And we're going to show you how you can adopt a resort, uh, coral here at the Arena Resort. Hi, I'm Naufal. I'm a resident marine biologist in Aluna Resort. Hi, I'm Aisha and I'm an intern at Coral Project. Hi, I'm Dawan. So I'm a sailing instructor in Aluna Resort. Hi, I'm Biha. I'm a marine biologist in Aluna Coral Project. Hello, and I'm the project coordinator for Aluna Coral Project in Aluna Resort. Sunny, can you tell us like what was your vision when you create this resort and the challenges? I'm sure you had a lot of challenges that you when, when you create this resort? Uh, where do I start? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, when, we, when I start this resort, my partner and me, we have the same vision as a diver. So being a diver, we care a lot about the environment. We understand the importance of the environment, especially the marine life. So our vision of the resort is about creating a unique experience for our guests while caring for the environment that we live in. All right. So, uh, the three key points to illustrate what I've mentioned about the vision is number one, at the development side of the resort, we do not touch the originality of the land. Yeah, I can see this inside the, the resort itself. Yeah. There is a tree inside that is protected. You know, yes. you, you didn't cut. This is this is awesome. It's so cool. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Robert. <laughs> Actually, yes, you're right. The tree. I mean. Uh, when we, when we do the development, before we start the development, we ask about uh, we get a boris to come and actually inspect some of the trees, which are the native trees. We retain the native trees. So later you can have you can have looks of all the native trees around uh, in the resort. Uh, we only remove tree that is uh, planted by human, like fruit trees, rubber trees. So these are the only trees that we remove for our development. All right. So what, what is uh, the challenges? The, biggest challenges that you have okay. where do i start <laughs> i think every development has a lot of challenges yeah it is yeah. okay number one um, let's talk about the design of the resort initially it took us it took us about more than uh, a year to just get the design and in fact during the construction and the development period we keep changing the design because we have to take the considerations of the view of the resort yeah every single time. room has the sea view, right? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of the initial design was a frontage balcony, we realized that a frontage balcony is not suitable for the for the roof for our guests yeah. and it was blocked by another unit. So we create a new design by having the rooftop on the balcony. So every room we have here, Roman, we have a staircase that goes up to the rooftop, that's where your balcony you can have a 360 view. Yeah. Wow. You have the view of the sea. Paradise. <laughs> paradise. People think that they need to go to Maldives to, no, to find paradise. Really. Guys, come to the Perinchan Island at the Alunan Resort and it will Maldives. be in paradise. Maldives or Malaysia. <laughs> Thank you. So today we are going to adopt and name a uh, coral. Yeah? So you can name the coral as you want. I don't know how we're going to call it so far. <laughs> and Obo. I Obo. Obo is our cat's name, so we're not going to call it the, the coral Obo. So Akim here is going to tell us about all the process to help you uh, adopt a coral and name your own coral. So basically my name is Hakim, I'm the project connector here. So I've been working in Aluna Coral Project in Aluna Resort for almost uh, three years. I would say I started in 2020. So let me show you to the corals that we have around here. So all of these corals are live corals that we have collected around the area. 
So one of uh, our reasoning why we wanted to save the coral is because there's a lot of issue nowadays about the corals. Uh, especially in Pulau Perhentian, there's a lot of tourists, there's a lot of uh, activities going on, not just for tourism, also for fisheries activities. The coral are one of the most uh, heavily impacted marine life. So what we do with the corals uh, that we found around the area, we collected the, uh, them and then we took them uh, from the water and then we bring it here as part of their transit tent. And then if you can see that this is the pot that we're going to use as part of our restoration unit. So a lot of people doesn't know, corals that you're seeing here right now is not an animal, it's not a plant, they are animals. So same <laughs> goes, yeah, same goes to our cats, our self, tigers, uh, birds, everything uh, belong to the same group as the corals, they are animals. But they are not really uh, the kind of animal that want to move a lot. They just wanted to stay in one place and then just build up their uh, body. So one of the way for us to actually check either the coral is alive or dead. So you can see there's a slight uh, colors in the corals. Looks a bit brownish. Some looks a bit yellow. So this one you can see is a bit dark brown. And another one will be a bit of a thin mustard yellow. So this is a bit more yellow. This one is yeah, alive this, as well. Yeah? yeah, this is a live one. Yeah. So the dead coral usually will look like this. So what? these are the coral, the dead coral. So these are the dead one. So what we can we are, what we can do with this? We cannot do anything. We can just show to the guests, but uh, we can just show to the people how it looks like for the coral uh, skeleton. So mm. if you guys see here, this is the skeleton that basically the same composition as our bone. They are basically from the calcium carbonate uh, calcium carbonated skeleton, mm -hmm. but different from us. They don't need milk to build up their bone. They derive calcium. So what they do, they will take the calcium ion that presents in the seawater and then they absorb in their, uh, in their body. So as time goes by, they will just develop more and more uh, co very complicated structure. So coral as an animal have a very simple body structure but because of their skeleton is very complicated, give a very good benefit to a lot of fishes and a lot of marine life in the world. So this is what we're going to do today, a very simple process just to put the coral tie it on top of this coral pot and then we bring up uh, them in the, our coral nursery. Right. So corals, when I talk about corals, they are basically not one animal. So the one that I'm holding right now is a cluster or colony of corals or colony of coral polyps. So if you can zoom in closely actually, that's right here. So you can see there's one very tiny circles inside the crevices. Those one tiny circles, or you can see we call it one poly, is equal to one individual. So basically in this one very tiny fragment contain like Thousand. maybe uh, maybe thousands of animals. Uh, no no ones or any researcher have ever counted this one. It will be a waste of time to count them. But <laughs> some species are very big that we can actually see the individual polyp. So this this is that I showed before it's a dead coral but you can see those one tiny hole is actually where one animal sitting in. So there that's where all of the animals and their body and their muscles live in. So this is where they are kind of like put their body and they just grow up to, to become bigger. So again they are very simple they are very small they don't move they don't do a lot but they are doing a lot of things for the marine life. And how do they feed themselves? They eat plankton? All right so yes they do eat plankton mostly 20% of the day especially in the night but most of the coral uh, most of the time coral we use uh, things that live inside their body which is we call it zooxanthellae a type of plant that live inside the coral tissue mm. that give them the ability to absorb nutrients from the sunlight so basically what they do uh, any excess nutrient comes from the algae that live inside their body is the one that give the most nutrient to the coral for them to grow mm. yeah but when we don't have sunlight uh, especially at night then we, we you can see all the tentacles of coral going up and they catch anything of uh, plankton, some can catch small fishes and a lot of other things that they can get in their mouth. And yeah. how long did it take them to grow like this? Like the, the, this the one. one over here? Right. So uh, we have two, you can see here, this, uh, we have two different types of coral. This, these two cluster, these two fragments we call it the branching coral. They grow quite fast, uh, some, uh, especially at this one we call it the cauliflower corals. They can grow, uh, I think within one year, they can grow up to the point like more than 5 to 10 centimeters. Wow. So that's how fast they can grow. But species like this boulder coral grow very slow uh, to the point that uh, in the peninsula Malaysia, in the east coast, uh, they can grow only up to 1 or 2 centimeters a year. Just a very tiny bit. So that's why when you go for a snorkeling trip and then you see a very big boulder coral, 
some of them can I would say the age might be estimated around maybe 200 400 years old that's the estimation uh, of coral reef that we have around in Pulau Pohantian so they can live forever basically live forever so uh, imagine that immortal. you know the coral that we planted might just outlive us very easily basically immortal but unless we do not destroy them they will just grow on forever all right yeah and so, why why they die what so so there's a lot of reason that the coral is dying right now one of the reason is we're talking about the global warming so the global warming is causing the sea surface temperature to rise and when i'm talking about the sea surface temperature rising it's not about five centi uh five degrees celsius not 10 degrees celsius it's just one degree celsius is enough for the coral to get bleached and become white like this so especially we have an issue back in 2010 uh, or uh, previous year uh, we call it as the El Nino event, which is the there's a heat wave during that year. So if you know about Great Barrier Reef in Australia, almost 80% of the coral there bleached, died, and then only 20% came back to life. But luckily in Malaysia, the corals that we have here are quite resilient to uh, you know warmer water because we are in the tropical country and more throughout the year, our uh, our climate is hot. So basically, we do have bleaching event, but most of the coral they, uh, regain back came back to life. So that's one thing that we wanted to do here in Aruna. We wanted to make sure that the coral can be a bit resilient to uh, warming of sea temperature because right now, if we look at the trend, it's getting warmer and warmer and hotter every year. So these are one of the worst things that actually have uh, affecting the corals. Alright, so where do we begin now? So where do we begin? So first of all, when you wanted to handle a coral, you might make sure that you have some glove on. So the glove is actually acting as a protection between you and the coral ah. because, because even though you can see the corals, they look very rough, they are very sturdy, they are very hardcore looking that kind of skeleton but they are very sensitive. I might not know you have anything on your hand like soap, lotion that actually mm. can hurt the coral, can harm the coral. Mm. So while having this glove on is actually just to make sure that there's a cushion between you and yeah. also the corals. Yeah, mm. because yeah. it's alive as well. So yeah, if you get Maybe it can grow into your skin, yeah. Uh, yes, right? it can. It can scratch your skin, and then first, uh, when we usually we touch the coral directly with our hands, they can get stressed very easily. Right. So that's why some of the coral, they you, you can smell the very uh, fishy smells. Uh, this those the mucus that the coral are uh, released to make sure that it's to protect themselves. Right. Uh, but this one is quite okay. There are some species in the tank that, if you handle it not correctly. They will just get slime everywhere, like oh mucus everywhere. It will smell fishy. Don't stress, buddy. Don't stress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one is still okay. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So we are good video? people. All right. Um, right. Hold the camera a bit. All right. So you can take. So one you want me to? Hold uh, you it. can just. You can just uh, wear it on one of your hands. Right. Roman going to try. I'm scared. I don't want to hurt him. I don't want him to hurt me. <laughs> They don't bite, yeah? They don't bite. We, we try. They, they can scratch. They can scratch, but they don't bite. They don't bite. They are not sharks. I don't know. Shark don't bite. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do today, uh, right now, is quite simple. So we're just gonna take the corals, put it on top of the pots, and yeah. then use the long end of the uh, cable tie to tie, tie it, it around the coral, and then you just put it inside this uh, cable. All right. Let's right. see. Just film like this. So you can see what you're doing. Yeah, that's right. why. It's very simple. Let me show you one example. So you take one pot, and then I'm going to take one of the corals. So with your hands, with your glove on, is the one that's handling the corals. And then tie it on top of the pot. And then you just make sure it's... You can... To the point that you can, you can, you can move the corals. Alright. Alright. Mm. So right now, when we kind of try to move the coral and doesn't move this is what we want so the reason why we don't want the coral to move on top of this pot if yeah. you can touch with the hands without the glove on touch the surface of the pot uh, some some of it smooth some of it rough so it's like if the coral keep on moving on top of the pot it's like we're grinding the coral yeah it will damage yeah we damage the coral it will not grow so this is what we're gonna do so it literally looks like a pot of plant mm -hmm. this is what we call this uh, our coral pot coral pot yeah coral it's the pot. coral pot so once we finish we put it here first just to make sure that they don't dry out. Okay. Yeah. So it's your turn. Which one do I take? I can take this one. Oh, this is okay, yeah? Ah yes. Gentle. I mean you can be gentle but do not be too gentle. Yeah, they can they can handle a bit of pressure. Mm. Alright. Just gonna see. 
Maybe catch it. Oh. Now you can just put it all the way in. Alright. You can move that all the way in. Okay. Alright, come a little bit closer so we can see. Yeah. So we so tie that down. Yeah, you can try to pull it just a little, little bit more. Yeah. You can use no you can, you can just use your bare hand, just push this the head of the cable tie. So once you feel like it doesn't move anymore, okay. and then try to okay. wiggle the coral. So if it's not too wiggly, like this, then it's okay. That's it, right? Yeah, so you can try to move it. Is yeah. it wiggle too much? No, it's not. No, it's not. So this is very good. So uh, this is how it looks like for the coral. So the one that he planted just now, this is the coral that we call as the postulo coral or cauliflower corals. Because when they grow, they really look like cauliflower. Alright. Yeah, as the vegetables. <laughs> yeah, very yes. nice. This is one of the best species that we have in the nursery. So within, uh, sometimes within five months, you can see they grow to the point you cannot see the cable tie. And you cannot even see the pots. Alright, so we're now going to be going diving and plant our baby over here. Yes. We named it, guess what? Discover Evolution. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the name of our website and YouTube channel. So now if you come to Arunan, you can ask them where is Discover Evolution and you're going to be able to see our call. <laughs> <laughs> guys so this was our little video on how to adopt the coral here at the Alunan Resort we hope that you have enjoyed this little video with us and if you have not subscribed yet do not forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell see you on the next video guys bye bye, bye.